Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sayarite. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make the quick and easy platform cushion. This cushion has seamed corners and has fabric that wraps around to the backside and is stapled to the backer board. We'll be using the quick and easy cushion making approach, but it's stapled to a backer board on the back side. We have a separate video which highlights seven different techniques to make a cushion. It should help you make an educated decision on which approach works best for your desired results. Click the link in the upper right hand corner or in the description below to watch. This is a cushion that is stapled to a backer board called a platform cushion. Shown here are the key features of this type of cushion. If your cushion is square or rectangular shaped, you can build it the quick and easy way. The only thing you need to sew is the corners. This is by far the simplest way to make a cushion that is stapled to a backer board, period. The first step, using the calculator and cutting the fabric to size. So we're going to go to the Sayrite Fabric Calculator, which tells you exactly how to cut your fabric to size and also gives you a material list. You need to make sure that you click the platform button rather than the fabric bottom button. Let's get started and show you how to make this cushion. You can find this calculator at the Sayrite website. Click on Cushions, then click on the Quick and Easy Box Cushion. Enter your measurements for the desired size of cushion that you want. Clicking the cushion style is important here because we're placing this cushion on our backer board and they're going to staple it on. So you need to click on platform, then hit the calculate button. Here under key dimensions, you can see the top plate for us needs to be 31 inches by 31 inches in our corner notches 5.75 inches deep. Those calculations will change depending on the size of cushion that you desire. We've measured out on our decorative fabric uh, the exact size of our fabric plate. And now what we have to do is we have to mark the corner cutouts on the Sayrite Fabric Calculator. For us, it said to cut them 5.75 inches. And I love to use the clear acrylic ruler because you can see right through it on the marks that we made with the chalk pencil. And all I need to do is run it over here and run it over here. And now we have the corner cut out. We're going to do that to all four corners. I'm going to place the CRA tempered cutting glass on the bottom side and I'm going to cut it with a hot knife. Why is that? Well, this will keep the edges of the fabric from unraveling. You could cut it with shears or pinking shears. The pinking shears would help prevent the unraveling of the fabric. But this is just a phenomenal way to keep this acrylic fabric from unraveling. We're using the serrated edge hot knife. This is a, a cordless hot knife. We also have a corded one that's less expensive. And this is a 100% solution dyed acrylic upholstery fabric called out Dura. Extremely UV resistant, fade resistant, and stain resistant. And you can get it at Sailrite. Basting and sewing the corners is the only sewing part of this cushion process. So here's what your pattern would look like for the quick and easy with the platform bottom. And there's excess fabric so that it can wrap around that board. Now we're using a really thin board, but uh, you can use something thicker up to three quarter of an inch if you want. Uh, that would be a little bit on the thick side. We're going to put basting tape on one side of each one of the quarter, quarter notches like this. And you can use pins or you can use uh, fabric uh, and leather clips to hold this in place. Make sure you put the double sided tape on the outside surface of the fabric. And we're going to peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue. This glue is an acrylic glue. It is not a rubber based glue so it doesn't yellow over time. And we put outside surfaces for so they're facing each other and all you want to do is just fold it to that, that corner that you cut and line up the bottom edge like that and baste it down. And we're going to do that to all the corners. Now if it's slightly off a little bit, don't worry about it. It's not going to make any difference. We have plenty of fabric and you should still be very accurate. So we're going to do this to all four corners. I'm going to put the machine in about a four to five millimeter straight stitch and reverse the, about the same. 
and make sure my needle's in center position. Then I'm going to take the magnetic guide and put it on at the half inch on the needle plate. So I'm sewing a half inch from the magnetic guide. And uh, all we have to do to each one of these corners, this is one of the corners, is we need to start up here, kind of off the fabric in a way, uh, do a little bit of reversing because this is the only thing that's going to hold these corners together. So I'm going to sew forward and then I'm going to sew in reverse. Sew down this side, keeping that fabric up against the magnetic guide. When I get to the bottom, I'll do a little bit of reversing here. And that's all we do. We do that to all four corners in the same manner and we'll take it back to the table and show you what's next. In this next chapter, we're going to be cutting our cushion right foam to size. To determine the appropriate size of foam to cut, refer back to the fabric calculator under key dimensions. I've marked my foam to size with a permanent marker and you can use an electric kitchen knife that you use to carve a turkey for Thanksgiving or you can use a serrate blade foam saw which makes almost a perfectly vertical cut. We'll start with show, demonstrating the serrate blade foam saw. We're using Cushion Right Premium Foam. It is a high density foam which means you can use it heavily and it will last for years without bottoming out. Nice cut. For this approach, what I do is I usually use the edge of a sacrificial table so I can hold my blade straight and I line the line up with the table and put a weight on top. If you plan on using your cushion occasionally, consider Cushion Right Standard Foam. It is a medium density foam. In short, if the foam is used heavily, the higher the density, the longer the life of the foam, while indentation force deflection, or IFD, has to do with how soft or firm the foam is when sat upon. It's now time to place the cushion cover on top of our foam and staple it to the backer board. So our foam has been cut to the appropriate size according to the Sarite Fabric Calculator, and our uh, platform has been cut to the right size, and you can see that our platform is about uh, a quarter inch uh, smaller than the size of the foam and that's exactly what we want. So now this is our cover fabric. Let's just move this aside and we turn it right side out and put your finger in the corners to basically push those out and once that's done we put everything inside of there so that's kind of what we want to do and put our foam in like this with our backer board on the back side. Sometimes I move this out of the way and get my foam in first and work it into the corners. Now it's important before you start stapling it on to actually push the foam into the corners so that you have it looking as nice as possible. You can do some manipulation afterwards but it's a good idea to do this now. Now it's always a good idea to round the corners otherwise it will poke through the fabric. And so we've done that to all four corners on our platform board. And now all we need to do is push it in, position it, once you have it in position, if you apply pressure like this, you're going to get hard spots. So you almost want to do this consistently. Sometimes what I do is I actually take my hand like this. And I want a little bit of tension on there, and I definitely don't want it to be askew. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to put staples close to the edge, like that. So we're going to do this here, and then I'll put like three or four staples there. And then I'm going to spin it all the way to this side, make sure the corners are in the right spot, because uh, you can only manipulate this once. That looks pretty good, I think. And we want to do this directly across from the side that we just stapled. Sometimes you want to lift it up, take a look to make sure everything is going nice and straight. And I think it is. And then we're going to apply some pressure here, like that. And we're going to staple it in the same four spots, approximately. Now you can always pull these out if you're not happy. So four spots there, take a look, make sure that everything is nice and straight. If you had stripes, this looks great so far. Now I'm going to work over here and we're going to do the same thing on this side and then this side and then we'll show you how to finish it up. Okay, so now that we have all four sides uh, secured, I'm going to work towards the corner 
And again, we just want to staple in that direction. And we'll do the same thing here all the way to that corner and then I'll show you how to do the corner. So there's several ways you can do a corner. You just want it to look nice more than anything. But what I like to do with the thin fabrics like this is lay down the center and put a staple here. And then I just fold this over almost to the center line, which creates a little wrinkle there. You have to have a wrinkle, obviously. Put that down and then fold this one almost to the center. Pull it taut and put a staple there. Make sure that we don't have any pulled fabric. And then make sure you secure it well. Now make sure you staple into your board, not into your, off your board. So that's how we do the corners. And the result is something like that, which really does look good. We're going to do that uh, to all the four corners and we'll show you what's next. Now we just want to go around the perimeter and cut off the excess. And if you notice some loose spots, you can always go back with your stapler and kind of get in between like that. Let's cut this around the perimeter and then we'll put a backing on it. In this next chapter, we're going to add a cushion underlining. This is optional, but it gives the backside a finished look. Refer back to the fabric calculator in the list of materials and you can see what size we suggest to cut the cushion underlining to size. This is cushion underlining material. It makes a great backer for a platform cushion. And I've already marked it to size. I marked it a half inch larger than my finish size. My finish size is 19 inches. I marked this 19 and a half. This is an optional step. You don't have to put this on the backside, but it makes it look good. So I'm using the quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery that we used on the corners. And I put it on around the perimeter of all four sides. I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper. And I didn't mark this. I'm just gonna estimate uh, approximately a half inch single hem. Um, this just makes it easier to put this on the back side rather than just hemming it while you're stapling. So I'm gonna do this to all of the edges here. So our hem is facing up right now. We want that hem to be facing down. We want to center this on the back side. We intended it to be a little bit small. It's supposed to hide those staples. Now you may be saying, well, you're going to be putting staples in this yet again. So the staples will be exposed. That is true, but I'm going to be pretty precise about hiding these staples. Let's make sure we come over enough to hide them all. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them carefully right at the edge. And I'm gonna go all the way around the perimeter doing this. Okay. Here's our quick and easy cushion with the platform on the bottom and we did staple on an underlining, which is an optional step. Coming up next is the materials and tools list that we use to make this quick and easy cushion with a platform bottom, or what is referred to as a backer board. For our decorative fabric, we chose Outdura upholstery fabric that's 100% Sushan dyed acrylic, great for indoor and outdoor use, available at Sailrite. This video is part of a set of six tutorials showing different techniques to sew cushions. Click on the playlist to see others. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new tutorial videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant. Thanks for watching.